there, guys. This is Mr. Herbst here, and today our focus is going to be on population ecology. So in this video, we're going to talk about this concept called carrying capacity and also kind of what environmental factors lead to carrying capacity. And before I go any further, the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, population growth or population density. Uh, population density is the number of organisms that live in a given area. Um, so if you look over here, this crowd, uh, this, this crowding going on, that's a very high density. But if you look at, say, like a rural area where there's just kind of farms, you know, every couple miles, that's a very low density. So cities in general have a very high density, but rural areas have a low density. Um, and so also populations can grow due to immigration. The United States is very notorious for that. Um, in the United States, we have a lot of immigration. People move in. It grows our population a lot. And then also emigration, where people or organisms exit a region. Um, to keep these in mind, think immigration in or emigration exit. Um, next concept is this thing called exponential growth. This occurs when a, um, a, a population's... Uh, uh, the population number sort of explodes. Um, and so generally populations start to grow slowly. That's because if you think about it, there's not that many organisms to actually be there to reproduce. Uh, for example, if we take a look over here down at this chart, uh, right around here, you know, we don't have very many individuals, way less than 100,000, maybe only like 1,000 or so. There's a small number of individual bacteria there that are going to even be available to reproduce. But given some time, those bacteria are going to reproduce, and as more bacteria become available, more bacteria are capable of reproducing, thus the population is sort of going to explode. That's currently what's going on with human beings uh, right now then eventually a population will probably reach what we call a carrying capacity. That a carrying capacity is the, the, the most number, the largest number of individuals that environment can support. To help explain that, check out this video. Hey there guys, I'd like to introduce to you a man that shares 50% of my DNA. My dad. Say hello to my students, dad. Hello everybody. He is going to be a little guest star here to help us represent this concept called carrying capacity. To do that, I'm going to go over here to my bucket of ping pong balls. Let's say, for example, that each one of these ping pong balls, which, by the way, come in different colors, remember, variations, each one of these ping pong balls represents a single organism. And my dad's hands here are going to represent the environment that these organisms live in. Now, the environment can easily support one organism, right? What about two? No problem. How about four? No big deal. What about six? Still can support six. How about eight? No problem. How about ten? No problem. Think we can go for more? We sure can. <laughs> Let's That's shoot nuts. for it. This is 13 organisms in one environment here, guys. Ah, look at that. They fell. Those organisms reach what they call their carrying capacity. That means that the environment can no longer support a massive explosion of organisms such as this. And that can occur in several different ways, and we'll talk about that in a second. Just know that carrying capacity is the point at which the environment can no longer support a large number of organisms. And remember, I'm a trained professional. Don't try this at home, guys. Perfect. All right, that was good. All right there, guys, I'd like to uh, shout out a special thanks to my dad for helping us out to understand carrying capacity. But to sum up, carrying capacity is the largest number of individuals that an environment can support. So if we take over here uh, a look at this graph, uh, the number of individuals here increasing over time. And so uh, eventually, you know, populations start out kind of small. And as more individuals are added to that population through reproduction, there's more individuals available to reproduce, and thus the population starts to explode. And eventually, it reaches a point in science we call that point K. It's called the carrying capacity, at which the environment can no longer support any more individuals. And we'll talk about why that happens in a second. Now, I want, I want you guys to notice here that the population, once it reaches carrying capacity, might fluctuate up and down a little bit, but on average, um, it won't be able to increase any more than that. And so 
populations have limits. Um, as a population increases, it will eventually encounter its carrying capacity. All populations have a carrying capacity. And so there are these things called limiting factors that prevent the population size from increasing any further. To represent those things, we're going to call them density-dependent factors. Um, let's say that this bucket filling up with water is a population increasing. Eventually, the environment can no longer support enough food for that population, so things like starvation begin to kick in. Um, accidents, uh, organisms dying by accident, pollution, uh, waste of those organisms, old age, disease, predation, all of these things limit how big a population can get. And so as a population gets bigger, the density dependent factors also increase. And so those things can once again include things like disease, competition, parasites, and food. Um, you know, once, uh, once a year around August or so, as I am you know, teaching and I'm being introduced to a brand new population, you know, we, we go to school. I teach in schools and there's a lot more people there. And so there's a lot greater density. There's a lot more individuals. Thus, uh, diseases can spread easier. This is why I typically get a cold around August or September because I am reintroduced to a whole bunch of new factors that I wasn't before. And also, you know, as the population increases, one thing that's really important to understand is that food becomes more and more scarce. There's not enough food on Earth for to support all of life, so uh, competition takes or, over at organisms that are best fit for surviving in that environment will do so. Recall evolution. And now there are also things that limit population size, which we call density independent factors. Remember the word independent. That means it, it basically occurs without something. It's independent. Uh, however, they do limit in, uh, population size, but they um, don't really are, are not dependent on density. Um, they, the amount of individuals in a population has no effect on these things. Those are things like temperature. If it's too hot, it might kill some organisms um, just because they can't survive there. Storms, floods, droughts, um, all of these things occur sort of randomly or independent of a of how many organisms live there. So floods, which we you know we've recently had, are capable of um, limiting population growth, but they don't really depend on how many individuals are there. If that hopefully that kind of makes sense, we'll go. We'll talk about that a little bit more in class. And to sum up here, guys, I kind of want to use a real life example here. The population of human beings is exploding on Earth, and as it explodes, there is a higher demand for oil. And most scientists believe that we are going to reach a point at which oil is no longer going to be easy to get, and that point could be within even as soon as the next forty years. And so um, as population increases, as more humans are added on Earth, there is more oil, more demand for resources, and thus now there is competition. Prices go up, um, makes it harder to buy oil, and also, guys, there are wars that are started over oil. And so even though um, humans have the ability to sort of uh, manipulate our environments and increase our carrying capacity, we are still limited to how much um, resources this planet has for us to use. The more resources we draw out of the planet, the less available for us and thus makes it harder for all, us to uh, ultimately live on planet Earth. Anyway, guys, there, guys. Sorry for the doomsday talk. Um, uh, this is Mr. Herbst here. I'm signing off, but make sure that you go ahead and complete the Google form below. We'll uh, discuss these things in class. Have a nice day.